Hey, it's Alan. Welcome back. All right, we're going to be getting to some pretty technical stuff here. So if you're the kind of person who considers themselves not a computer person, but you know someone who is, you might want to get them to help you here because there's like zero margin for error with this stuff. But the way it works is I'm going to do Windows here. I'll do Mac in the next lesson. Just go out to Google or whatever and search for AMPS, spelled with two Ps. And this is it here, www.amps.com. Go to that site, and they'll tell you all about it. Um, just go ahead and click this first download AMPS thing. Obviously, you can read about it first if you want to, but I'm just going to go through the steps. All right, so the current version is 3.8. So I'm going to do it for Windows, so I'll do it here. It says 7, 8, 10. I'm using Windows 10, so um, I want to do this one. I'll just click Download. It'll download like anything else. Uh, I don't know. The Mac thing just happens to be showing there. That's not what I'm downloading, though. All right, when it's done, um, you can click that and choose Open. I'm using Chrome, so this is how it works. Then it'll go through a installation wizard pretty sure you can just click next on each one yep yep uh, yep 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 okay next so next 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 uh, next and then it'll go through an install procedure I'm gonna speed some of this up. Yours will take longer than this, but you don't want to watch me do it in real time. It'll take much longer, so some of the stuff's gonna be a little fast motion. All right, when you're done then, you'll get this last page, click Finish, and AMPS launches. Oh, first you have to, right, you have to install this. I think I already have it installed, but I'm gonna click Yes anyway, because I'm not 100% sure, and it won't matter. It will either just say Repair or Skip It, I guess I already did have it installed, so I'll just close that. But you would probably install it if, if you get a message saying that, you know, it's ready to install. And then this is what AMPS looks like. Now, it defaults to a, a version 5 of PHP, which seems pretty antique to me. I mean, you can leave it that way if you want. But I usually click this option thing up here and choose Change PHP Version and go to the some version 7 which is more current um, and then it'll uh, reload amps and everything and it should just show PHP 7 7.1 whatever you have there alright so now I have that version 7 going now I also like to have its notification icon showing when it's running so you can right click the current date time and choose custom notification icons or customized notification icons Click this turn, or no, see which icons appear in the taskbar. This is Windows 10. I think it's roughly the same in other versions. But you're just looking for the option to turn that uh, AMPS one. There it is here, AMPS Control Center on. And that just makes sure it's always visible down on the taskbar. Then you can just close this window. And so whenever AMPS is running now, it'll show up here and then you can right click it and play around with it there. Well, one thing you may want to do is right click that and choose configuration Apache. Should open in some text editor. Choose edit find and then type uh, add type one word like that. Next. Now what we're gonna do, what, if you look at it what it says well you have to find the one that says application uh, PHP here it is that tells it what file types can contain executable PHP code and normally uh, .html and .htm aren't in there so you want to add those make sure you precede and follow each with a space so basically what this allows me to do then is use PHP code in my web pages without having to change all their names to .php or something else and then another thing you may want to do since you're here is choose Edit Find and search for index.htm. All right, find next. And what I'm looking for is this directory index. If module, DIR module, directory index. 
just add, if you don't see index.htm in there as a whole name, just go ahead and add it. And what that means is that you can name your home page for any folder, either index.htm or index.html. Now, it's fine if you don't want to change it. If you don't change it, it means you have to make sure you name your home page in every folder index.html, not index.htm. But a lot of public web servers let you use either one, so configuring this localhost server that way is probably to your advantage. One less thing to remember. All right, and then that's it for configuring Apache. Now, Apache is the actual web server. Um, so just close and save that file. Now, any time you make a settings change or something, you should really go into AMPS. You can see I still have it running here. Um, if I double-click that, it opens this up again. And then click the little gear icon next to Apache, and then this last arrow which says refresh or restart, I think it is. Now, restart, if you make a mess of it, you can use that restore default configuration. But here I just want to click restart. So that just makes sure that Apache um, starts with the new settings I put in that file. All right, so anytime you want to close AMPS, just click that uh, X in its top right corner and choose yes. Now, I have to tell it where my website is, my local website. And now you can have any number of them. You might have 10 of them. It doesn't matter. Um, but the first thing you need to do is open up File Explorer, then open up the folder that contains your code for your website. Mine's um, Alan underscore how on the desktop. Then click your Windows Start button, type AMPPS, and when you see it on the Start menu, right-click and choose Run as Administrator. This part you have to do as Administrator, or you'll manually have to update your host file later. It's easier to just Run as Administrator. Okay, and then when AMPS opens and you see the various services are running, click the little house icon there. That's called Admin Home, I believe. And then what you want to do is add a domain. And it sounds like you're making a real website, but it's just a website that exists only on your computer. And so give it a name, dot local. I usually use dot local. No spaces or underscores in the name, just something like allenhow.local. Then you need to tell it the exact folder location. What I would do is go back to where you already navigated there, click this little folder, and then you see the exact path. That's what you need, the exact path to that folder. All right, and that goes in right here. Now it tells you it can't do host, but it actually will. So, um, as long as both, now let me change that. Um, as long as both those values are right, you click Add Domain, and then it should show you that it successfully added the domain. Click OK, then go to Domain Manager, or Domain Manage, and now you'll see it here. There's the one I just created. And now if you click Hosts File Contents under that, you should see um, that domain name you just added and the IP address 127.0.0.1. So when you click that domain name up in the top list, it should actually open up your site and it'll look exactly like it did when you chose run from browser, but we're going to be able to do a lot more now with it that we're running it from the localhost server. Okay. Now if for some reason uh, your host file didn't get written to, maybe you forgot to do run as administrator or something. You can manually put those in there, but you have to be very careful. Click the Start button, type Note, right-click Notepad, and choose Run as Administrator. And then in Notepad, choose File, Open. And then in the Open dialog box, make sure you set this filter to all files because the file you're going to edit does not have a txt extension so you have to set that to um, all files and then you have to navigate to c colon backslash windows backslash system 32 backslash drivers backslash etc and then once you're in the right folder you should see that host file you can open that one and it'll look something like this 
Now, mine already has that allenhow.local site I just set up, and you always use the local host address 127.0.0.1. But if mine didn't have that, in order to make sure I typed it correctly, I would probably copy one of these from above, paste it in, and then just change the name to the correct spelling for my particular folder, which would have been allenhow.local. And don't put the hash mark to the left because that makes it a comment. All right, but I can't really keep mine like this because it's already in mine. I just uh, copied it as an example. I have to take that back out. If you do change your localhost file, I suggest close and save it. I'd even go and close AMPS, either by clicking its X button if it's there. If you only have this icon in the notification, you right click and choose quit. And then once it's quit, go back to your start menu and just start AMPS normally right from the start menu. The only time you have to run as administrator is when you're setting up a new domain because that allows AMPS to have access to that host file and make changes to it. Okay, so that should get it installed and configured for Windows. In the next lesson, I'm going to talk about doing that for a Mac. Obviously, if you don't have a Mac, you can skip that lesson and move on to 14.